Seven luxury items that I would not buy again. You know when you buy something and you have it for a few months and then the reality sets in. These are the luxury items I would not purchase again and why. And make sure you stay tuned until the end of the video because I have clearly been making the same error over and over again. It will become apparent throughout this video and I'll be sharing it at the end. The first disappointing luxury item I bought on a bit of a whim and it is from Saint Laurent. Now this piece often sells out and it is the Saint Laurent coffee mug so this is made from ceramic and this retails when i got this i think it was about 90 pounds i think they're still about the same and i kept seeing this one on instagram and i was like "Ooh, i would definitely i'm a big coffee lover i am an oat flat white kind of girl let me know what order you take and i figured you know this coffee cup is definitely a little bit extra why would i not buy it again so there are a few things that i have found the reality of this actual coffee cup number one it's very heavy it is made from ceramic it is not lightweight in any way shape or form but that's not my biggest bugbear with this coffee mug actually my biggest bugbear is the mechanism of the lid it literally comes off so easily you have to really make sure it is on there and there is just nothing stopping it from booklet just went flying but yeah I really do not like the lid um, I wish it was kind of a screw top or something that just felt a bit more secure than this one does also I'm not sure if the camera will pick this up but it's an actual like dust and mark magnet on here when actually walking around with this coffee mug it's just unnecessarily heavy and then when you're actually using it and drinking out of it I don't know I just never feel like the lid is fully secure on there so this was definitely a 90 pound waste of money something that i will not buy again i think from now on i'm just going to stick to regular coffee mugs without the saint laurent logo on the front hey everyone steph here if you are new to this channel welcome if you are a subscriber welcome back guys if you want on my email list already it is absolutely free to sign up i will pop a link in the description box down below for you it means you are going to be notified of all my new video releases before anyone else and also exclusive discounts now the second item on today's list when i was at celine one of the sales associates showed me this item and as soon as i saw it i was sold add to basket i'll take all the colors on a serious note though i really did love this item and i still do but um, there are definitely some downsides to it so it's from celine and it is the compact wallet and i got the shiny black calfskin i bought this at the same time that i got my celine 16 bag here which i have no regrets about like this is one of the best buys i have made in 2023 because originally i wanted to get the team triumph bag so it's the bag with this emblem on obviously it's much bigger and that's the bag that i went to try on but i fell in love with the 16. so because i didn't get the team triumph i figured this would actually maybe scratch that itch a little bit and the thing that really sold me about this is that you get so you kind of have the wallet here let me open this out and show you with the card slots and then you get a detachable look at this it pops off card holder with a little zippy compartment on the top and I thought this would be great so I could team them both up when I wanted a slightly bigger purse and then sometimes when I just run to the shops I don't really need to take like a big purse with me I could just take like a little card holder and I thought this was a genius idea but all hasn't worked out as I'd imagine they would have done but here's the reasons why I would not buy this item again even though it is incredibly pretty okay number one when I take this off and use it as a card holder I literally have one slot. This is it. It has like a little card in there at the minute. I usually like to carry maybe two or three cards with me and I'm finding that I'm having to kind of really stretch this pocket out to get my cards in there. And of course on the back, you then do have the studs on the back. So that's not too much of an issue. The biggest issue for me is that I like to run out with this as a card holder and I've got one slot on there. Then that leaves this half of the wallet. And again, we're kind of running a little bit short. If, if you like me, I like to carry quite a few cards with me. We only have four, four cards card slots two on this side and two on this side and because they are positioned in this middle of the wallet kind of have to really hold it open and then really try and get your fingers in there to pull the card out now if they were situated the other way around for example it would be a lot easier to take the cards out than have to fight 
with the other cards on the other side and, and get them out. So not many cards and just that little practical issue. I keep notes in this part of the wallet, which is absolutely fine. I will say as well, you might be able to see, there are some scratches to the leather already. Now, Celine does use really nice leather and I knew that this type of leather would scratch because that is the type of leather in general. It's not got a really thick coating on like a lot of other leathers do. So these are called chrome tan leathers and they can be coated with things like plastic. And sometimes if you get a really scratch resistant bag, it's because the leather's been coated in so much like chemicals and plastics and all of that stuff. So I actually don't mind that this is, you know, you can kind of still see the grain of the leather. It still smells really beautiful. I knew that it would scratch more because of that, but still we do have a few scratches on there. So it's kind of worked out that neither of these are working out how I wanted them to exactly. And that has meant that I am back to using my original purse wallet, if you will, from Saint Laurent. So I have this card holder. It's a little bit battered. I do use it a lot. You can see I'm literally using it right now because my cards are in and we have one, two, three, four, five slots on this. The one thing that I will say, and this is why I changed from this one and was hoping the Celine would work out, is that when I have notes or bits of paper, like uh, discount vouchers, for example, I used to put them or I do put them in a zip compartment on the YSL. So this is kind of a two for one, two for one on what I wouldn't buy again. So you can see I have some notes inside here and they always get caught in the zipper. So like, it's really embarrassing when I'm trying to open my purse and they just get jammed and I have to kind of ram my finger in here to get the notes out. It's very embarrassing, but I do really lo love this. Like I love the shape of it. I love like the card holder aspect. I'm back to using this. I will link it down below. But the plan was to use this and maybe sell this because it would become redundant and that hasn't quite been the case. And I guess I'm still on the hunt to try and find my perfect wallet slash card holder. If you've got any recommendations, let me know. Item number three is from Jimmy Choo. I've spoken about these a few times in previous videos, so I'm gonna keep this one really quick, but these are a pair of shoes that I need to sell and they are the Jimmy Choo Averline Bow Shoes. They retail at 850 pounds and I got the black pair. Now I will say, and I've said this before, I think these are like some of the most beautiful shoes. The reason I haven't sold them yet is because someone said to me, why don't you take the bow off here? So this is the issue with them. The bow is so big, you kind of end up stepping on the bow. This is quite a common issue. Um, but someone said to me, what if you could take the bow off here? on this one and put it to the back of this one. So it would look a little bit different, but it'd be kind of like two different bows on the back of the shoe here. And for that reason, I have not got rid of this yet because I'm still weighing up whether I maybe want to try that. But I think in order to not run the risk of ruining these beautiful shoes, I might just sell them to someone that will use them. But yeah, I think these for me, I will not be buying again. And just as an alternative, what I got instead, I got these beautiful Alexander McQueen like crystal shoes. I got these from the flannels website and they were marked down super heavily. I think these were meant to be nearly a thousand pounds and I paid 270 pounds in the sale. Like they were such a bargain and there's no issues with any bows and I still think they just look as fabulous. So these would be my alternative, a little bit different, a little bit more glitzy, but definitely a lot more practical. Disappointing luxury item number four. I do not want to show you deep down. I really don't want to show you this, but I do want to give you my honest thoughts on these sneakers. They are from Hermes and they are the day sneakers. Okay. Why have these been disappointing? These are just plain white sneakers. They have the rose gold on the front. They can be quite hard to get hold of. They now retail at 1,050 pounds. I think I paid 950. I think these have had a price increase of around 100 pounds. I just wanna say, I think the quality of these sneakers are definitely like fantastic. Like the stitching, the leather, um, they've been very comfortable, you know, on like the back from day one. I've never had any issues with that. So I don't know whether it's just my feet, but I put these trains through their paces when I go to London because I'll be wearing them all day. I recently wore them for about 12 hours straight. No, in fact, I think 14 hours straight I wore them. And to be honest, this would be a test for any pair of sneakers trainers to last that long and be comfortable. They were mostly comfortable for the first part of the shopping session, if you will. But later on into the evening, I found that the round toe, because it is quite rigid, really just started 
to hurt my toes. And it ended up getting to the point where I did actually stub my toe as I was wearing these, but my toes were already hurting so much that it bruised one of my nails really badly. And I've had to gel over them now because there's just such a big bruise under my toenail, which does not look good. So to summarize that, I think the quality of the day sneakers from Hermes are definitely worth it. If you are only wearing them for a few hours, they are absolutely, for me anyway, comfortable. But if I'm wanting to wear them all day, because they are mostly flat. I just know that I now need like a pair of trainer trainers, like more of a sporty trainer. I do wonder whether the Hermes Bounce sneaker probably would have been a much better choice in terms of comfort, but I am slightly disappointed that I can't really wear these all day when I do my London trips. They do just get a little bit too painful. So I'm definitely going to be keeping these because I like them. I love a white sneaker like this. They are just classic, they are timeless, but I will not be buying another pair. Luxury item number number five would be my Fendi puffer jacket. This now retails at £2,650. I believe I paid £2,150. So there has been a price increase and I think the design has changed slightly. But this is a very oversized jacket. Now I will say this is the warmest thing I have ever put on my body. The quality overall is really good and a great thing about this jacket is you can reverse it. Now the reason I'm disappointed with this item is more because of myself. So I got sucked into the hype a little bit with this jacket. I remember seeing Kylie Jenner wear this and we've also seen Ariana Grande wear it. But one thing that I didn't really take note of when I saw those images is that Kylie Jenner, for example, was on a ski trip. Now I don't ski. I don't really like super cold climates. I will do my best to avoid them. I live in the UK as it is. And if I go away, I generally will fly to warmer destinations where I can. Now, because this puffer jacket is so warm, it means that I just really have not used it. And this is a lesson for everyone out there. Pay attention to the context in which the item you are buying is being worn. If I go on ski holidays, I'm sure it would have been fantastic, but also I do think to myself, okay, if I did ever go on a ski holiday or go somewhere really cold, I would literally have to wear this jacket on the plane because it is so big, it would just take up so much room if I were to put it in my luggage. The only quality issue actually that I would flag with this is the zipper can be really frustrating. Like just to get it up and down, it just jams quite a lot, which really frustrates me, especially when you are paying for a really expensive piece. But I mean, other than that, I would say it's a really great piece I just got this one really wrong and I found it disappointing because I haven't really had the chance to wear it, which is my fault, not really Fendi's. Item number six is another one from Fendi. Again, not really Fendi's fault. These are my Fendi slip-on sneakers. Now I got these from Vista Village, so I did get them for half price. And I will say, I still think they are probably like some of the coolest sneakers I have seen. They have the FF monogram on in like the vertigo print. They are in the tobacco colorway. But the main thing for me, I just love kind of the platform sole. It has Fendi going all the way around. They are leather lined. They are so luxurious. But, and someone did say this to me, actually they said they tried this pair on but then they got the lace-up version of the trainer and I regret in hindsight not listening to that piece of information because they aren't super heavy but they do have a bit of weight to them because of the sole being so thick and they do slip off the back of my foot slightly. I probably needed half the size down, but I just couldn't be bothered to exchange them at the time I was being lazy. But if I had the lace-up version, I think I would possibly last all day in them. Fendi have also recently brought out a new pair of trainers called the Match Sneaker. And I think this would be a much more sensible option. So lesson learned here. These are very cool looking, but I don't get as much use as I'd hoped out of them. And this is partly my fault, but they are just still so pretty. So I'm going to persevere and try my very best to wear them as much as I can. Disappointing luxury item number seven. And there might be a number eight if you stick around. Just for you guys who are still here watching the video, there will be a bonus and it is a bag, okay? It is a bag. But item number seven is my Balmon blazer. Now, this item has been disappointing. Again, it's mostly down to me in that I don't think I've ever worn this blazer out of the house. I love the look of this blazer, but I feel like there was a phase everyone went through, or I definitely went through on Pinterest and on Instagram. Everyone was wearing the Balmain blazer, the Gucci Marmont belt with some jeans, maybe a t-shirt. Maybe that was the look. And I don't know what happened, but it kind of just 
went everywhere. Like we are seeing dupes from Zara, of H&M, of the Balmain blazer. Now I will say, out of all the ones I've tried, none of them fit like the Balmain blazer does. And the quality of the fabric of this blazer from Balmain is up there. But since it has now been done so much and duped so much, and it is quite a formal style, I just never wear this piece. I did recently try, and I think it's called the Mary Jane blazer. I might be wrong at Balmain. It had much pointier shoulders and just one button on. Really, really beautiful. I loved it, but I think the shoulders would have been just a little bit too much for my style. So I have debated taking off the two buttons on my Balmain blazer just so it has the one. I feel like this would tone it down a little bit more, but I know this blazer fits me perfectly. So that would be great. And that is why I haven't sold it yet. Because you're still here then, disappointing item number eight. And I said this would be a bag. Now this is a bag I do not talk about a lot on this channel. I got this one pre-loved. I got it for a fantastic price. Um, I got it on eBay. It has been authenticated numerous times and we are all good. It's a very beautiful piece, but for the reasons I'm about to share with you. This is my vintage Chanel square bag. This is in black patent leather. And because it's a vintage one, it's actually the 24 karat gold plated. Now I have come very close to taking this bag out a few times, but a few things about this bag. This is the reason I haven't really used it. It's really heavy. <laughs> the chain is quite big and chunky. And the times when I have wanted to use this bag, kind of been a bit wary about carrying such a heavy bag around all day. You can only crossbody the bag. You can shoulder it, but it does would sit quite low. So I prefer to crossbody. But you will also see here that the painting on the leather has come off. So uh, painting is basically plastic on top of leather. So it's chrome tan leather. It's finished with a plastic finish. That is what makes it shiny. And the plastic on this side has, you can see it's just completely different to the painting down here. And then you've got this part here. So I'm going to look at getting this restored, but painting is one of these leathers that is notoriously hard to take care of. It can be extra fussy and you can often leave fingerprints very easily on something like this and makeup marks. And this has actually put me off quite a lot of using the bag. I don't know why. I just feel like from the side, it does look pretty bad and I don't know if I will be able to get it restored. Let me know if you're surprised by this. I'm a little bit surprised. I just kind of looked at my collection and I was like, I love this bag. I love the way that it looks. I got it for a really great price considering this is vintage Chanel, but it's been a little bit disappointing. Maybe I should have considered a little bit more how this might put me off. And also until you get a piece, you don't really realize how you might weigh up which situations you would wear them in. So this beautiful girl hasn't really ventured far out of my bag room and that makes me really sad. So what have I been doing wrong all this time and how am I trying to combat this? To me, it's really obvious what I have been doing wrong. I have been looking at things by themselves, thinking they look great. They're not really giving a second thought to my life and situations that I would actually wear them in. Now it's quite obvious from this video as well, one of the biggest areas I have issues with is with designer and luxury shoes. And I guess until you've actually worn a pair of shoes for a few hours, you don't really know what the comfort level will be like. One way that I am trying to combat this very clearly bad habit of just buying things because I think they look pretty and cool without really thinking about it is starting to create mood boards. So taking items that I've already got in my wardrobe and then adding that new item in and seeing if I can pull together maybe five to 10 different looks with that piece. And then if I'm still like, yep, yeah, that's going to go, they look really great together, then I know it's probably going to be a really good buy and hopefully something that I will use a lot and won't be disappointed. Are there any disappointing luxury items that you've purchased recently? Please do let me know in the comments down below and why you haven't got on with those items. I feel like we can learn a lot from each other by sharing information like this. Now make sure you don't go anywhere, however, because coming up next, I'll have my latest video release here for you. And over here, seven designer bags I was influenced to buy and what I think of them now. Do I have any regrets? Enjoy. 